Good evening, everyone. I'm Raquel Patchen, and welcome to this wonderful concert tonight with the Low Country Voices, a tribute to gospel music. I have the pleasure of speaking to Mr. Nathan Nelson, the director of Low Country Voices. Hey, glad to be here. So glad you're here, Nathan. Thank you for having me. This concert is something that you've been wanting to do for a long time. Yes, for about three years, uh, I've had this, this a baby, actually, that I've been carrying in my spirit for about three years. And I'm glad that it's actually here and that we have the time to present it uh, and the chance to present it to the audience tonight. How wonderful. Now tell me about some of the artists that are featured in the concert tonight. Well, all of the artists that we um, selected were artists that actually really created and paved the way for what our church for many years have gone through. Um, the, they've shaped the styles of different denominations. So some of the artists that we're going to pay tribute tonight it will be the father of gospel music, um, Thomas Dorsey. Mm. We will also pay tribute to, they call her the mother of gospel music, some um, Mahalia Jackson, um, the queen of gospel music, Albertina Walker in the Caravans. And then we have uh, Reverend James Cleveland, who is known as the king of gospel music. And we move down the line into our contemporary set with Andre Crouch, Walter Hawkins, uh, Dr. Mandy Moss Clark. And I believe that's it, yes. Now these artists have shaped the music of the African American church, would you yeah, say? Yes, yes. Um, you have Thomas Dorsey, who was a huge influence on the Baptist uh, style. And as a musician, uh, most musicians know what style to play when they say Baptist or you go to Church of God in Christ. Uh, Dr. Maddie Moss Clark, who was the mother of the Clark sisters, um, really helped create this cogent sound that a lot of the young musicians my age uh, looked up to. Uh, you have Walter Hawkins, uh, who was greatly uh, influenced so many of the, the new composers here today, like the Richard Small ones, the Kirk Carr, singers of Donald Lawrence. And so they still carried that legacy on from Walter Hawkins. And then you have James Cleveland, who was also big on creating the sound for just the general church, uh, Baptist in particular, but just for the big, big church and the big choirs. So uh, they really helped shape the style um, of music and what you would hear in your church. Of course, Andrew Crouch uh, shaped so much of the music for us because he could compose a lot of service music. Uh, the Blood, which would be used for communion, I always remember, which is a benediction song, and those type of things that our churches sing in a regular service. Soon and very soon, every funeral uh, that you go to where African Americans usually yes. sing those songs. So it, it really helped embody what we do in our style, uh, in our daily lives as urban church. Wow, this is a concert that has such a rich heritage. Yes, yes, and this is a history lesson. Uh, as the choir has been preparing for it, they've been very excited. Uh, but we've taken time out of each rehearsal to really focus on the style, uh, the little nuances that these composers brought to uh, their music and to the radio, 
and really have this be an educational setting. So tonight is an educational lesson mm -hmm. for everyone to know why we do what we do, why is this song here, and, and what this artist really did uh, to make music what it is today, particularly gospel. Now, I have a feeling you'll probably mix in some of that low country sound that you do yeah. so well into this. Tell me a little bit more about that. Well, you know, Charleston has its own style, uh, the low country. And so everything, even if we were to do this concert in Chicago, you would still hear the Charleston flavor. It's just something unique about Charleston. And so um, we will add our own twist in there every now and then uh, that would make it even more special. Wow, so you've got a special guest coming. Yes. yes, he's actually a family member of mine, uh, Robbie Rivers. He was actually uh, learned and he taught uh, many of Mighty Moss, Clark, Mighty Moss Clark songs, uh, but he learned under her. I didn't know that. Yeah, he learned from her and he's very good friends with the Clark sisters. Um, and so he is what some may call the new Mighty Moss for Church of God in Christ. Um, so he'll be with us, awesome singer awesome choir director and just an awesome person and all around. That's powerful. It sounds like he will probably help convey some of that heritage and yes. history. Yes, and that his is Church of God in Christ all the way. <laughs> and so uh, I thought that there would be nobody else that could do this tribute uh, any justice besides Rob. Well, I know I'm excited. I am too. I can't wait to hear the concert tonight. Thank you. But thank you so much um, for spending this time with me. And everyone out there in the audience, get ready. You're in for a treat tonight. Thank you. If you can't talk to God, if you can't say something to your neighbor about God, if you can't, don't know God, you need to start over again. I have the distinct pleasure of having with me today Mrs. Sandra Barnhart, the Assistant Director for Low Country Voices. How are you doing? Fine. How are you, Raquel? I'm doing great. I'm so excited about this concert. I am too. Oh, and you know, I know that you have such a rich history with this music. Yes. Now tell me a little more about that. Well, this music goes way back, as you understand, it's, it's the history of gospel music. I've actually lived through some of this with uh, some of the artists that we're doing. Uh, I started playing for my father's church at age 11. 11? 11. And by 16, I had five choirs. I was wow. minister of music. I distinctly remember when Oh Happy Day came out on the radio, and it was a new sound. It didn't sound like gospel, but they were using the lyrics of a hymn, Oh Happy Day. And I tried it with my youth choir, and the minister after church took me downstairs. He says, um, Sandy, I don't think we want that type of music in this church. What? And all it made me understand what Thomas Dorsey went through when he first tried to bring his music into the churches and the preachers and the people in the church mm -hmm. did not want to hear it. Gospel music has had such a hard way to go, but we have persevered. And this concert is going to take people down memory lane. When they hear Mahalia Jackson's song, I remember Mahalia Jackson coming to the big Baptist church. You saw her. I didn't get to go. My parents went. And my mother came home just, she was on cloud nine the great Mahalia Jackson. And then to leave Mahalia Jackson and go to Reverend James Cleveland, I mean, he is gospel music. Yes, he is. I don't care what gospel music you do, you have to do James Cleveland. And even today, the younger generation, they travel to his annual convention that he started, which is the Gospel Music Workshop of America. That was started by Reverend James Cleveland. It is the largest gospel music workshop in the world today. And so when people come to this concert, they're going to get a history lesson. But not only history, they're going to become so emotional because they're going to remember these songs that their grandmother sang, yes. their mother sang, or when they went to church and Sunday school. We're going to take them from Thomas Dorsey all the way up to the day. And I'm telling you, when you leave this concert, you're going to know that you had a tribute to gospel music. 
I can't wait to see, and I can't wait to see you direct because you're so passionate. I've watched you in other concerts. I can only imagine what you're going to be like. I know. <laughs> I, I'm a little anxious about it because with gospel music, you know, you can just really get going. Yes. And so um, I'm excited about how I'm going to direct myself. I can't wait to see it <laughs> myself. Well, Ms. Barnhart, thank you so much. Thank you so much for speaking um, to me today. And those of you that are out there in the audience tonight, Things are about to begin, yes. and I can't even describe what tonight is going to be like. See you there. Amen.